Starting Alabama with uh, Guatemala was a rather simple thing because I had a very, very fine man who was the, the editor-in-chief of the Birmingham News. His name was John Bloomer. Unfortunately, he's no longer living. But John had read some articles about Guatemala, and I said, I know just where you can go. And so I got John Bloomer to head up the team of going down to Guatemala and to meet with a counterpart group. And uh, sometimes I would go with some of those first groups to help them get started. But after uh, the initial activities, I would withdraw. But I would stay in touch enough that I could see that things were really moving on the track that we had outlined. And so with Guatemala, it was because of that one man, John Bloomer, who was the editor-in-chief of the Birmingham News, and with that newspaper, he could write articles, he could write pictures, and he did. And he helped to, to publicize things about Guatemala that we wanted known in this country. And that was the beginning of that particular relationship. With other relationships, uh, it was a little different. Uh, in getting, uh, uh, for example, uh, Idaho working with Ecuador, uh, there was a medical group that seemed very, very interested in helping with medical assistance. And uh, I knew of activities and situations that needed assistance in that field. So we helped to bring them together. And it was just automatic. It would, it would blossom. It would grow. I think we helped start the spirit of volunteerism. Because uh, I would go to these states and I would describe the situation, the kind of assistance that they could give. I think we kind of launched it, as a matter of fact. The biggest obstacle I had was uh, the obstacle of uh, Washington bureaucracy. But some people in Washington didn't care for what I was doing, and some people in some of the embassies in Latin America didn't like what I was doing because I would go around them. I knew what embassies would be responsive from my own contacts and my travels. And those that would be responsive and help, I went with them. I got their assistance. But if they wouldn't, I just went around them. And I worked directly with the counterpart group. I did not want this to become a pink tea society. And that is why I organized the private partners program. And I gradually transferred the functions from my office in the government to that private organization. Uh, which is the Partners of the Alliance, now they call it the Partners of the Americas. Uh, because I knew that if it remained within the government, uh, it would be an ambassador's wife's pink tea society. They would eat nice, pretty little things, but it would not be of real assistance, and it would not help educate the Americans about Latin America. And, and now, with the 40th anniversary of the partners, I'm so excited to see that the concept has continued to go. Now, I know there are a lot of different things that are being done now than, than, than they were done when I first started the program, but uh, the concept is the same. And uh, developing friendships is the same. So I'm very, I'm very pleased and happy, and I certainly wish I could be in Antigua. Am I surprised that it's gone for 40 years? I'm not surprised, but I am happy. I, I couldn't be happier. People like people. And when you get areas working together on projects and activities, and the, you develop the cultural exchanges and the language and the music exchanges, all of these that go with it, even sports, uh, it, uh, it becomes very satisfying and a continuing exchange. I'm very pleased with it. I feel like I've, I've done something worthwhile. And all of the things that I've done, and I've had a lot of experiences. I've traveled in 58 countries of the world. I've really done a lot of things. But I think that the Partners Program is probably the, the most uh, exciting uh, and the most uh, valuable part of what I've done with my life. And I'm glad that I did it. Keep it up. 
you're on the right road. And don't let the bureaucrats wear you down.